Hello and welcome to Bloom On. My name is Michelle Elport with Spot 127, and with me today is Emma. Hi, I'm Emma. Ellie. Hi, I'm Ellie. And Allison. Hi, I'm Allison. Three peer advocates from Bloom 365. Today we're talking about the March for Our Lives rally, so let's get started. Alrighty, so the March for Our Lives rally took place on March 24th at the Arizona Capitol. So everybody got there around 9 and started gathering. Speeches began at 10, where one of Bloom's own, Sienna, um, kind of had her own personal speech on what she has experienced with gun violence and why she is at the rally today. Uh, Bloom 365 had a table set up. We completely sold out of t-shirts uh, that said enough on them. We were also selling com- consent pins to tie in a uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is April. So we certainly had such a large presence there at the rally, and we all marched together for one cause. Can you tell me just a little bit about how Bloom's message fits into the movement? So Bloom is all about bringing love onto others and recognizing uh, healthy and unhealthy relationships. Uh, So it's really important to understand the root causes of gun violence also come down to power and control. And that is something Bloom is really passionate about and we like to educate others on. So how can other teens uh, like you get involved both in the larger movement and with Bloom 365? It was really easy to get involved with this rally. You could either volunteer, there were hundreds of teens volunteering there, organizing it, announcing, or you could just simply attend and march. Um, It's also really easy to get involved with Bloom 365. You can contact us or start your training with the seven doses. So what do you think is the long-term effect of getting involved with something like this? At least for our generation, Generation Z, we're the most technologically advanced generation there's ever been. So with the social media and all the social media platforms there are now, it's so easy to get to spread the word and to make our opinions known. And also we're the generation that will be able to vote soon if we're not voting already. So with that comes along a new wave of gun violence control measures which is what the March for Our Lives march was so much about. How are you taking this into your own community as Gen Z? Um, myself and a few other peers at school uh, were leading a push and through our administration to create certain safety measures um, among campus so that students would not fear for their lives when attending school. Do you personally feel afraid for your safety at school? In a way, I think it's just very important to recognize um, what's at stake here and that it's extremely important to implement safety measures so that every single student feels safe coming to school. So along with that, um, critics of the movement have addressed a lack of representation of people of different races and sexualities. Can you describe that for me? Um, I think it's very important to understand and put yourself in other shoes. I have many peers who uh, support the movement but don't support the movement of putting an SRO or a police officer on campus uh, due to the race issue that comes with that. Um, I think it's very important to understand the uh, perspective of people that come from all walks of life. I think another thing that's important to address Um, specifically with the race side of it, is that there are other groups like Black Lives Matter that have been trying very hard for gun control and gun violence awareness, and it can feel a little bit like they haven't been properly represented in this movement. And it's so important that everyone is represented in this movement. We're going to need everyone possible to get this movement movement to achieve its ultimate goal, um, whatever that may be to get the safer, stricter gun laws passed, which will help, which will bring more safety into our schools. So we're gonna need everyone as possible. So inclusion is so important. So how do we get to that level of inclusion? I think just having a diverse amount of voices and just diverse representation in general, making sure that people who are standing as allies allow the people who actually are a member of that group, whether it's like racial or sexual orientation, are able to speak their own experiences. I know that many people feel like uh, the March for Our Lives just represented gun violence in schools when gun violence has been occurring 
all over the country for years and years and years and that was really frustrating to some people or the Black Lives Matter movement that this movement got so much popularity but theirs didn't. In going along with that, my school, it's in a very nice part of Scottsdale, Arizona in the downtown Arcadia neighborhood. So some of my peers and classmates feel that since we live in this, since we go to school in this safe space, it doesn't really affect us affect us and that's not the case at all it can affect any school of any ethnic background any racial sexual background so it's important that everyone get involved no matter if you think you're safe or not it can happen to anyone at any time going off of what emma said um how do you think that this movement has affected your own school climates well at least at my school, they're more of a conservative administration. I don't align with the administration's values at all, and I've been trying to push for more inclusiveness. And my friend and I, we were able to bring, they, we pushed the administration to let us wear pantsuits at our winter formal, and we got them to agree to that, which was great. I just think we can do so much more with the power that we have where the students in the administration can't tell us that we can't have these stricter gun laws despite what their administration says. I attend a very conservative school as well, so the administration um, has put a lot of restrictions on the students and after the recent shooting I felt many of my classmates were very on edge and felt that it was their time to do something about it but couldn't get anywhere because of the administration. I also go to a very conservative school and my school is also religious and the students were all kind of unanimously trying to push for change and push for a walkout and our administration actually prevented us from doing that so I think that's definitely not an okay thing. Our spring break was during the walkout and I was saddened by that because we couldn't show the support that other schools were showing. We could show it on social media, but we couldn't show it in the classrooms. And our school actually did tell us that if they had, if we didn't have spring break during the walkout, and if we had walked out, we would have gotten suspended. I also happened to have spring break during the walkout, but there was a number of students who were trying to organize another sort of walkout so that we could still uh, show our message and show unity, but we were also told that that wouldn't be a good way of uh, bringing our message along so that we weren't allowed to do that. Do you think that even going to a conservative school that your involvement has made you more able to take a stand and advocate for your peers? I think so. Go, As I mentioned previously with the pantsuit at Winter Formal, we were able to push for that. And also in, res- in response to the transgender bathroom rule, uh, over 600 of my classmates, myself included, we all signed a petition and sent it to our administration heads for them to change the transgender bathroom rule. They haven't responded yet. We sent that in August. So... I think that with the administration, it just, it, we really want to push for change, but there's really only so much you can do without fearing of getting expelled. And I know that, that our school shouldn't prohibit us from trying to advocate for our other peers. I think at my school especially, it makes us more inclined to get involved, and we've kind of taken up the mentality of they can't expel us all. Um, So we definitely pushed and pushed, and they finally let us have a prayer service, which isn't necessarily what we wanted, but it's better than nothing. At my school, I've seen a lot of peers honestly just give up. Uh, we've So many people have gone to administration to try to create change, um, and they've just been turned down. Or even I have a friend who was even pushed out of the school who, told, who was told that this wasn't really a good fit for them anymore and that they should probably find another school to attend. With your experiences and um, everything that you've learned, what advice would you give to someone else in your position? Would you tell them to stand up and do what it takes, or are there limits to that? 
I would say in the end, don't be afraid to stand up. You cannot give up, otherwise change will never happen. It's just so important to remain passionate and remain optimistic if you really want something to happen. I think it's also important to recognize that if you are in a position where your school's going to expel you or suspend you, there are alternative ways to protest. You can always call your senators, you can show support on social media, spread the message, things like that. Social media, it's such a big platform and there are so many platforms that are available to teens now in this age. So using that social media and finding like-minded people who can get behind your movement and asking like-minded peers and classmates to get behind a movement at school, start a club. That's a way to get involved. Who do you look for for help or for guidance? Well, at least being Bloom 365, peer advocates, always being in contact or being able to be in contact with the lead advocate it's always so important they can help you with the tougher questions that you don't really know how to answer kind of the bigger what's my next step sort of thing after someone has maybe disclosed to you or asked you a question that you aren't quite sure how to answer thoroughly going forward do you think that the march for our lives and the movement as a whole is going to be effective I think it will be. I read an article on my phone that said that the march in D.C. had over 800,000 people in attendance, which makes it the largest single day protest or gathering of people in history. So I think that really shows that this is a movement that so many people care about, especially the teenage generation. We're going to be the generation that votes all the politicians that aren't doing what we need them to do out of office and putting the ones who are going to get the regulations that we believe will be effective and keep everyone safe into place. I definitely do think it will be effective, but I also think it's important to recognize that it does not stop here, that we have to continue to push forward, continue to persist on, tackle all the obstacles, and eventually change will happen. What is the tipping point? Getting a majority of politicians who are for all of the gun regulation legislation, I think that will maybe not be the tipping point, but will be the bridge we need to get across and get our message heard and get it enacted and get it made into law, which will help the school safety, which is what March of Our Lives is built upon. I think another important aspect of that is also just as a nation addressing the fact that power and control really is the root of this problem and that maybe stricter gun laws will help kind of reduce that, but just addressing that it's not necessarily a mental health issue. That's usually the scapegoat is, oh, well, they were mentally ill, so we couldn't have stopped that. And it really is power and control and recognizing that. Can you describe just a little bit more what you mean by power and control and how that affects like school shooters like Nicholas Cruz? Mm -hmm. I think specifically with Nicholas Cruz, he had shown signs of that kind of behavior. You know, he had harassed his ex-girlfriend and they were aware of that and they didn't really address it at all. Um, And just being able to recognize that and seeing that people who show that kind of behavior, it's important to address it when it happens instead of looking at it in retrospect and saying, oh, well, we should have noticed that sooner. If you see something, say something. I know you hear that at the airport all the time with your unattended baggage, but it also can apply to this too. If you see someone that is acting strange or acting like the way Nicholas Cruz was, you can do something to prevent it and you can do, you may be that tipping point in preventing another mass school shooting. That's why I think it's so important to get Bloom 365 in schools to really educate students about the red flags and the warning signs. That way if a student does see something, they can say something. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening to this Spot 127 and Bloom 365 podcast. I'm Michelle Elport and join us next time.